السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله والشكر لله. I think my favorite part was the kids and the candy and uh, the joy, just the excitement, the energy, and uh, inshallah, it's a reflection of all of us on the day of judgment seeking water from the blessed hold of the Prophet sallam that energy, that excitement, that joy, that seeking from his blessed hand, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And, you know, children was, the, ch the children, the Prophet loved the kids, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so in the nasheed, there was Jaddul Husseini, Jaddul Husseini. We have to even it out. We mentioned a hadith of the blessed brother of Hussein, Hassan ibn Ali. And Abu Huraira relates this hadith that, and inshallah, it's a sunnah. We should all tonight or tomorrow, if there's a toddler in the family, do this sunnah. So that the Prophet وسلم, he held Hassan ibn Ali when he was a baby, a toddler, and the baby, the feet were on the blessed knees. And he said, and he holds him by the hand, he says, Tarakka, Tarakka, Aina Bakka, Huzukka, Huzukka, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which is, rise, rise, little baby with the small, small eyes, Tippy toe, tippy toe, all the way until the baby was standing on his blessed Sadr. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the Rasul that these are drops of the ocean of wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. That verily you are on a vast ethos, a tremendous character. And this is a verse that inshallah can frame the reflection of how do we seek the shafa'a that to the extent that we embody and approximate the prophetic character. Imam al-Ghazali places the book on adab al-ma'isha wa al-akhlaq al-nubuwa, so the courtesies of living and the prophetic character, he places it right at the center of his famous Ihya al din So Ihya al din has 40 books, book 20, Right in the center is the book on prophetic character because it's the balance. It's the it's the mayyad, it's the it's the standard, the criterion, the measure. It keeps everything in balance. So the whole deen and Ghazali's paradigm and project of reviving the entire deen, he places the prophetic person and the prophetic living and the prophetic ethic right at the heart of the book, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what we can do is that when we go back to the Book of Allah, when we go back to the prophetic character, that we seek that as our mizan, we seek that as our mi'yar, we make that our gauge, our criterion for our own comportment. And in this light, one of the early Imams of our tradition, Abu Hafs al-Haddad, rahimahullah, he says, Man lam yazin, Man lam yazin af'aluhu wa ahwaluhu bil kitabi wa sunnah. Whoever does not measure their actions and their states by the book and the sunnah. Wa lam yattahim khawatiruhu and is not keen and observant of even the thoughts that enter the mind. La na'idhu fi diwan rijal We do not regard such a person in the register of the spiritually mature. There are rijal and there are atfal in the tradition of spiritual ethics. And so the rijal are the spiritually mature, men and women, but the atfal are those who are spiritually immature. And so to make the kitab and sunnah are measured, that our Prophet Wasallam, the shafa'a is really, according to some of our scholars, it is the greatest act of futuwa in history. Futuwa being the ethic of doing for others, sacrificing oneself, and doing for others, serving others, caring for others, that what better act of futua than the intercession itself? And it's a magnificent affair. In one hadith that Tabari relates, and it's a sahih hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, on the day of judgment, all people will be resurrected, and I will be with my ummah on a hill. Ana wa ummati ala tal. Fayaksuni rabbi hullatan khadra. And my Lord will dawn upon me a green garment and then permission will be granted to me and I shall say whatever Allah wills for me to say فَذَٰلِكَ الْمَقَامُ الْمَحْمُودِ That is the praiseworthy station 
that Allah promised in Surah Al-Isra. Imagine him in that green, that glorious green outfit, leading all of us on that hill, inshaAllah. And we ask Allah for husn khitam. And in another lengthy hadith, that the Prophet, he was commanded to inform his ummah of his rank. And so Tirmidhi relates this hadith, that the companions were once sitting and they were waiting for the Prophet Wasallam. And so the Prophet, as he approaches them, Wasallam, he hears their conversation and the teacher is keen to see what's the state of the students. So he's listening for a moment and he hears one of them say, isn't it amazing how Allah took Ibrahim, Abraham as his Khalil, as his intimate friend? And then another companion says, yeah, but what could be more amazing than وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى taklima?" Allah spoke directly to Moses, peace be upon him. And then another companion says, yes, but Jesus, Isa, kalimatuhu wa ruhuhu, that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the logos, the, which in our tradition, kun fayakun. He's the result of kun fayakun that is, most, is so manifest because he did not have a father. And Ruh, this is Idafat al Tashrif. He is a spirit created by God, ascribed to Allah Ta'ala because of his rank. Peace be upon him. Wa Adam, Istafahullah Ta'ala. So the fourth one says, Yeah, but Adam, peace be upon him, Allah selected him. And then the Prophet enters, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, Qad sami'tu kalamakum wa I heard your speech and your marveling. And Ibrahim Khalilullah. وَهُوَكَذَلِكَ The Abraham is the intimate friend of, friend of God, and that is true. وَمُوسَى نَجِيُّهُ وَهُوَكَذَلِكَ And Moses is the one that Allah spoke to intimately, and that is true. وَعِيسَى رُوحُهُ وَكَلِمَتُهُ And that Jesus is the spirit and the word created by Allah, and that is true. وَآدَمْ اسْتَفَاهُ اللَّهُ And Adam, Allah selected him. وَهُوَكَذَلِكَ And that is true. أَلَا وَأَنَا حَبِيبُ اللَّهُ وَلَا فَخَرْ Verily, I am the beloved of Allah, and there's no arrogance in that. وَأَنَا حَامِلُ لِوَاءِ الْحَمْدِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا فَخَرْ And I'm the one that carries the banner of praise on the Day of Judgment, and there's no arrogance in that. وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ شَافِعٍ وَأَوَّلُ مُشَفِعٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا فَخَرْ And I am the first one to intercede, and the first one whose intercession shall be accepted, and there's no arrogance in that. La ilaha illallah. Wana awwalu man yuharrik bi halik al jannah. And I'm the first to, as it were, knock on the door of paradise. The right hand. Wala uh, fakhr. And there's no. Fayaftah Allahu. And so Allah will open that door. Fayudhilu niha. And Allah shall enter me into paradise. Wa ma'ya fuqara'ul mu'mineen. And with me shall be the poor and indigent of the believers. And there's no arrogance in that. And we know from other ahadith that the primary meaning are the people with material poverty, the believers that were materially uh, in, in, in poverty. Yet there are other hadith to also indicate that faqr means any tribulation. The believers that were most tested that they are first with the Prophet. And this is a consolation for the people in tribulation. We ask Allah for afiyah. And then he says, That I am the most honorable to Allah of all the ancients and all the latter day people. And there's no arrogance in that. This is the maqam al mahmud the glorious, sublime, praiseworthy station of the Prophet Wasallam. So reflecting then that this incredible, that his, his beauty Wasallam, and his majestic presence Wasallam, and the very mystery of what and who he was Wasallam, that the beauty manifested in his presence, that the hadith in the Shama'i literature, Jabir ibn Samura radiallahu anhu, that he relates, he says that Allah I once saw God's messenger on a bright moonlit night without any clouds. So I started comparing, looking at him. And he was wearing a red garment. On the Qiyamah, it's a green garment. That particular night, it was a red garment. And I started looking at him and the full moon comparing 
And in my, I swear, in my estimation, he was more beautiful than the full moon. And Ibn Abbas, he relates, he says that the Prophet وسلم, that he was كان رسول الله أفلج الثنيتين that he had a gap between a small gap between his front two blessed teeth, which was a a beauty mark, a sign of tremendous handsomeness. And he says, فلما تكلم when he would speak, it would be like light emanating from that beautiful gap in his teeth, the beauty, his beautiful presence that impacted the Sahaba, Allah be pleased with him. And that Ibn Umar, he relates uh, as is in the Sunan of Imam Darimi. He says, anjada. I never saw anyone more helpful. Wala ajwada, nor more generous. Wala ashja'a, nor more courageous. Wala adwa'a, wala awda'a, nor more luminous and lustrous and bright. Min Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But in the middle of those beautiful traits was ashja'a. So that's a trait of majesty. That with the beauty was the perfect balance of majesty. And his majesty was manifested in the 27 some odd battles that he fought. He was a majestic prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Sahaba would gauge and measure, and we talked about measuring vis-a-vis -vis the Sunnah. They would measure the courage of the Sahaba based on how close they were to him on the battlefield, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because he was the primary target. Every time he went out against the enemy, he was the primary target of his enemy, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That was their main goal. So the companions, the proximity to the Rasul was a measure of their own courage. Ashja'ana sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the rigor, the majesty. And he used that sublime majesty and rigor against the in the inner world as well. The world of the shayateen that have tried to take affect the hearts of his companions. And so in a beautiful hadith in Sahih Muslim, that the noble companion Ubay ibn Ka'b, anhu, the great companion scholar of the Qur'an, that he relates, he says he was in the masjid once, and one companion came in, started praying, and the qira'ah, the recitation was different than he had learned it. He got confused. A second companion came, recited it in a different way, and it was still different, a, a, another difference from the way he learned it. He started getting upset, troubled. So afterwards, they go together to the Prophet وسلم, and he tells them, he says, okay, recite. And each of them recite, The Prophet, he approved of their recitation. And listen carefully. Hazrat Ubay ibn Ka'ab, scholar of Quran, in that moment he says, فَسَقَتَ fi nafsi, سُقِتَ fi nafsi, يعني, Something afflicted my heart of takdeeb, of doubt. Something crept in right then that even I never had in Jahiliyyah. Even before Islam, I never had a doubt like that. And he started really getting worried. And the best of creation recognizes this, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he says, when the best of creation saw this in me, what had overcome me, ma ghashiyani, what had overcome me, darabe fi sadri, he struck my chest, fa fittu araqa. So I started sweating profusely. Fa ka'annama anduru ila Allahi azza wa jalla faraqa. And it was as if in that moment, as if I was looking directly at Allah out of fear and awe of Allah. This is the majestic aspect of the Blessed's heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One strike on the chest and that the sh satanic, the, sh the waswasa is gone and his marifa is so profound. He says, as if I'm looking at Allah. And one of the beautiful things of this Hadith is it's related to the Shafa'ah because then the Prophet, when he explains, وسلم, he says, Ya Ubay, my Lord revealed Quran to me originally in one variant, one aspect, harf. And so I made a petition that, oh Allah, make it easy on my Ummah because the different Arabian tribes spoke different dialects. So one aspect would be difficult. So my Lord then gave me ala harfain, two aspects of recitation. And then I again asked Allah to intercede, make it easy for my ummah. And then Allah says, I reveal it to you on sabatu ahruf, on seven aspects. That's the basis of the Quranic variants. And then Allah Ta'ala says, and for each petition that you made, 
I give you a guaranteed dua. And so the Prophet says, So I said, Allahumma ghfirli ummati once. Allahumma ghfirli ummati twice. Wa akhartu thalitha. But I reserve that third one. Ila yawmin for a day. Yarghabu ilayya al khalq kulluhum hatta Ibrahim. On a day that all of humanity will seek me out, even Abraham, my forefather. Peace be upon him. So we know from this hadith that when he's holding that banner of praise, all the prophets will be gathered there. All the prophets in their ummah, all the believers. But we are the first. We are his ummah. La ilaha illallah. The, rigor, the, the majesty of the Prophet وسلم, coupled with his intercession, his beauty, his majesty, and then finally his mystery. Like, how can we understand this sublime, noble heart. The greatest of our Imams, their conclusion was that we cannot comprehend his noble heart. We cannot comprehend his noble heart. And in this light, that one of the great inheritors of our Prophet وسلم, Abu Hassan al-Shadili, he said that he was once confused with the hadith in Sahih Muslim, إِنَّهُ لَيُغَانُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِي وَإِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةً That verily sometimes there is a haze that comes over my heart and verily I seek forgiveness of Allah in a day 100 times. Abu Hassan al-Shadili said he could not understand what kind of haze could cover the blessed heart وسلم, And then one night he has a dream of the Prophet وسلم, and in that dream the Prophet says, Ya Mubarak, O oh, Blessed One, إِنَّهُ غَيْنَ الْأَنْوَارِ لَا غَيْنَ الْأَغْيَارِ It is a haziness of illumination, not a haziness of distraction from Allah. Even the haze was deeper knowledge of Allah. And so according to Qadi Iyad, the haze was khashia, deeper awe, deeper awe of the divine, reverential awe of the divine, and the istighfar was shukr for that higher state. And so even the greatest Imams struggled with these meanings, but we'll end, we'll conclude with a summation of the prophetic way by the Imam Abu Hassan al shadili that how do we approximate, how do we reach this, these levels such that we can be best positioned for the Shafa'a, such that we can be best positioned to be close to the Prophet Sallallahu on the Day of Judgment. And we know that this deen is a journey. It is a tariq. The sunnah is a tariq because we know from the hadith, تَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا إِلَى يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرُّبُ إِلَيَا بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّ That my servant draws near to me by the obligations and then he continues to draw near to me by, by the extra deeds حَتَّى أُحِبَّ That's the end of the journey until I love him. And in that light, this great Mubarak inheritor of our Prophet ﷺ, Abu Hassan al-Shadri, he says, At-tariq Al-Qastu ila Allah Ta'ala bi arba'ati ashya. So he delineates this a method of drawing nearer to Allah. He says the path, the prophetic way is to seek Allah by four things. Whoever traverses all four stages is of the Siddiqeen, like Abu Bakr as Siddiq, like Maryam alayhi salam wa ummuhu Siddiqa, the highest level. Muhaqqaq, they are realized in the prophetic way. And whoever traverses three of the four, they are from the saints that are near to Allah Ta'ala. And whoever traverses two of these stages, they are from those shuhada, those whose very lives testi testify to Allah's oneness. Muqinin, the people of certitude. وَمَنْ جَاوَزَ مِنْ هُنَّ وَاحِدًا And whoever traverses one of them كَانَ مِنْ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ الصَّالِحِينَ They are of the righteous servants of Allah Ta'ala. And he says, أَوَلُهَا الذِّكْرِ The very first one is remembrance of Allah. To make that our way and our practice, a daily sustenance of the remembrance of Allah as a daily practice. وَبِسَاطُهُ الْعَمَلَ الصَّالِحِ And the Imam says, رحمه الله, the ground, the carpet, upon which we ground our dhikr is righteous deeds. And when the two are coupled, he says, وَثَمْرَتُهُ النُّورِ 
And the fruit of that practice, way of life, is illumination. That's the first stage. He says, وَثَانِيُهَا التَّفَكُّرْ And the second of the four stages is contemplation. Contemplation. And this was the 39th book in the Ihya al -Madin. Imam Ghazali put it all the way at the end before the book of death. Because it, 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 it is a summation of the entire trajectory of the religion. وَثَانِيَا تَفَكُرْ وَبِسَاطُهُ sabr And the outspread carpet upon which we ground this practice of contemplation of Allah and His majesty and His names and His creation is persistence, fortitude, sabr, patience, consistency, istiqama. He says, وَثَمْرَتُهَا And the fruit of those two coupled, al is true knowledge. And that goes back to book one of the Ihya. So it's a full circle. We keep on going through the trajectory of this beautiful deen. He says, وَثَارِثُهَا The third of these, Al-Faqr. Realizing our need for Allah. And back to the hadith of Shafa'a, وَمَعِيَ فُقَرَاءَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allahu alam, perhaps an illusion that it also includes people at, who have traversed to this third stage. And the ground, he says, will be وَبِسَاطُهُ Ashukr. And the ground of this virtue is gratitude. Recognizing that we need Allah in every moment and recognizing وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنْ اللَّهِ Whatever you have of blessings is directly from Allah. وَثَمْرَتُهَا And the fruit of those two المزيد مِنْهُ is increase in blessings. وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Because if we show gratitude, Allah gives us more. And the fourth he says وَرَابِعُهَا الْحُبْ you see, Hatta Uhibba, he is Habibullah. So the final stage in his path, in his blessed sunnah, is, is love. Wabisatuhu Bughdu Dunya. But the ground of love between the servant of and Allah is to have a serious antagonistic relationship with the dunya. Bughdu dunya. It bugd is stronger than distaste and indifference. Bugd is a true antagonism and animosity. A hatred of anything that distracts us from Allah. The dunya is not the world. The dunya is whatever of this world that glitters and distracts us from this noble path. And what's the fruit? He says, Rahimahullah, wa thamratuha al wusla bin mahmoob. It is to arrive at a deep knowledge of Allah Ta'ala. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realize in these meanings. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us the people that are closest to the beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this life and in the next life and, at the, and on that beautiful hill when he's donned in the green garment making the shafa'ah on the maqam al-mahmood with all the prophets and their umam there. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tamam al-afiyah wa dawam al-afiyah wa shukra ala al-afiyah wa al-ghina an nas Envelop us in afiyah in every moment of our lives and grant us husn al-khitam that we die with la ilaha illallah Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa 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 sallallahu alay